Deep in an African riverbed, there's a place where a mere drink of water can turn deadly. Two lion prides have settled here for one reason, to hunt the thirsty herds. These young cats are strong, but inexperienced. And making any kill is no easy task. They are up against the fast and the furious. This desolate place will push the lions to their limit because their biggest threat is also their favorite meal. Southern Africa is one of the few places on Earth where wild animals still run free. In Zimbabwe, one place in particular attracts abundant wildlife. This is Mana Pools National Park, home to hundreds of species. It sits in northern Zimbabwe, where its many tributaries and rivers feed into the mighty Zambezi River. During the wet season, water and food are plentiful. But in August, dry season begins. For three months, rain stops and temperatures rise. Water sources simply evaporate. Many animals move to the southern end of the park, to a small but reliable spring. Few people know about this spot at the base of a riverbed. But from August to November, dozens of species make it their home. Most are herbivores who must drink daily to survive. Among them, the Cape Buffalo. Big, deadly, and a lion's preferred prey. When the herds come, the big cats are waiting. Two lion families, or prides, have settled here. One consists of rookies. The other, seasoned veterans. Both have the same goal, eat as many buffalo as possible. The rookies are led by a nine-year-old lioness named Shaka, who has a distinctive gray nose. Her pride includes three other lions, all on the verge of adulthood. This season, she must turn them into skilled hunters. Her son, Chiduma, with his emerging mane, is strong but impatient, a trait that could cost him meals. His sister Moya tends to be a follower. She must gain confidence. The youngest is a male named Kwame. He's small, stealthy, and reckless. To survive, they must master the hardest task of all, killing the half-ton Cape Buffalo. Farther down the spring, the other veteran pride has staked out its territory. Its three lionesses have five cubs between them, and keeping them fed will be an uphill battle. Sunrise at the spring. 
The rain is three long months away. For now, the animals live comfortably. Shaka and her young brood are resting in treetops, catching a breeze. Suddenly, a dust cloud signals the arrival of buffalo. The same herd visits the spring each morning. And Chiduma is always watching. Shaka bears scars from this herd. Over the years, she's killed many of its members. The buffalo know her, too. By scent. There's a brief standoff. Then, the largest bull announces this is his spring, too. The lead bull, called the Pathfinder, decides where they go. His presence sends the timid Moya scurrying. Their strength in numbers. At a thousand pounds each, the herd could crush a 300 pound lion. An attack on this united front would be suicide. Patience is the name of this hunting game. the spring, the buffalo relax. And that's what Shaka's been waiting for. She wants to cause panic, to break up the herd and isolate targets. Most of the buffalo stampede out of the spring. With short legs and small hearts, lions aren't built to run long distances. At the top of the riverbank, Shaka needs to rest. Abruptly, the tables turn. Her old enemies remind her who's bigger. The effort has been exhausting, but successful. Shaka's isolated three bulls. These old males live on the outskirts of the herd because they're so aggressive. It will be hard for Shaka's rookies to take one down. Stalking and strategy are key. One bull is suspicious.
Chaka moves in. And the pride follows. The bull faces them head on. Fearful of his horns, they scatter. The rookies have seen lions mauled. It means a slow, painful death. They aim for his vulnerable back, trying to wrestle him down. The bull is enraged. His bucking keeps them at bay. He easily escapes. Then, suddenly, the second pride strikes. They are expert killers. For Shaka's pride, it's a tough but important lesson. Even perfect attacks can fail. Tonight, they'll go hungry. The midday sun beats down on the rookies, who cope by napping. Today, they're after smaller prey. Shaka spots Impala approaching the spring. They're easy to kill, just hard to catch. Shaka has less trouble with Impala. They're not as smart as Buffalo, but they are skittish. She must get as close as possible before she strikes. Juma charges, but it's too soon. He's cost them a kill. Now, Shaka resumes her hunt, alone. The Impala gather at a dead end. They spot her. But Shaka's not after them. She kills a kudu and shares it with Moya. But it's only enough for two. One month into the dry season, temperatures are reaching over 100 degrees. The veteran pride has yet to kill a buffalo. And their growing cubs are demanding more food. Warthogs will have to be on the menu. These awkward animals spend the hot days wallowing in the cool water.
behind the scenes, the lions take their positions. Nearly everybody scatters. But the warthog seems oblivious. Shaka and her rookie pride rise at dawn, hungry for a big meal. Before the heat sets in, the resident buffalo herd lumbers down for their morning drink. Shaka sneaks toward them, with her pride high above her. They're focused on one thing, an injured bull. But they have company. A lioness from the veteran pride wants a big kill, too. Shaka inches closer, the baboons give her away. And the buffalo flee. Moya and Kwame move down the riverbank. and Shaka leads the march. Shaka distracts the buffalo, so the rest of the pride can surround him. Youngsters don't fail her. Now, Shaka can strike. Chiduma is next, going for a rear leg muscle to drop him. Moya, Kwame, and the veteran lioness join forces. calls for his herd, but it's long gone. Moments later, the angry bulls are back for another skirmish. It's an age-old dance here, with long-time rivals testing each other's stamina and resolve. Even Kwame makes an attempt. Moya and Chiduma stand their ground.
Then, a turning point. The old bulls abandon him. Chiduma seizes the opportunity. Shaka's next. She waits for the perfect moment. This is the suffocation grasp. Her powerful jaws cover the bull's nose and mouth. Once the victim's down, the younger lions complete the kill. Finally, Shaka can release her hold. This meal of buffalo will keep them full for five days. The rookies are improving, but there's much more to learn. Nothing goes to waste at the spring. The vultures gorge themselves on the leftovers. The rookies still have some cub left in them, and Shiduma investigates. He even tries to take one home. But the bird isn't playing. When evening approaches, other predators arrive at the spring. Every few weeks, packs of wild dogs wander through. Often, they pester the locals. This one toys with a female kudu, who's more annoyed than afraid. If the dog were hunting, his pack would be alongside him. Painted dogs live in groups of up to 20 animals and are excellent hunters. Today, they're after Impala. Impala can leap 10 feet, but they can't always escape. Painted dogs are distance runners who exhaust their prey, then take it down. quickly strip the carcass to the bone, later regurgitating food for their pups. Afterwards, nap time. But 
those old bulls are always interrupting. Halfway through Zimbabwe's dry season, temperatures peak. Highs can reach 116 degrees. More animals crowd into the spring, searching for food. With fewer leaves and shrubs to eat, even the mighty buffalo are weakening. The rookies sleep up to 20 hours a day to cope. They haven't made a big kill in weeks. And Shaka needs a snack. The youngsters are lethargic. Only Shaka's willing to work. Lions are faster than warthogs, but they aren't endurance runners. So, the pigs win this round. are coming down twice a day now to drink their fill. With every visit, they are quickly draining the spring. Each animal can consume as much as 14 gallons at a time. The heat is making them irritable. Shaka would prefer to stay in her tree, where there's a slight breeze. But she has a pride to lead. Lately, the buffalo seem weary of this conflict. Still, they run. Shaka's taught her young not to attack a herd. But Kwame acts rashly. The response is swift. Maybe it's the heat. Maybe it's revenge. But the herd is unrelenting. One bull pursues Moya. Soon, she and Chiduma are cornered. The 
the buffalo surround the pride. And the herd just keeps coming. Then, a desperate cry. A buffalo has fallen and broken his leg. Instinctively, the animals turn. And the lions walk away. The buffalo circle back. But they can't fix this. For the rookies, it's an undeserved win. Shaka will claim the prize. Though many will benefit. Tonight, the spring presents them with an easy meal. Zimbabwe's dry season brings another spectacle. This is one of two impala mating seasons, when males jealously guard their females from rivals. The war dances are all consuming and exhausting. But the bucks can't protect their herds from everything. And the veteran pride is lurking. The lionesses take similar positions in each hunt, with one behind the target and two lying in wait. The pride closes in. Causes panic and fear is contagious. pushes the Impala toward her pride. There will be one less female in a herd tonight. In the cooler night temperatures, Shaka's pride rallies, along with a competitor, a hyenas in their territory.
Chaka tries to bully him, but the animal backs into a thorn bush. The lions fear the hyena's bone-crushing jaws and keep their distance. Eventually, the pride pulls back. They have larger prey in mind. An elephant herd has arrived. The rookies have no chance against an adult. But a baby is a manageable target. Lions have superior night vision and use it to their advantage. Shaka roars to scare the cows. A calf loses his mother. Now he's defenseless. to urge her baby to its feet. Elephants have a complex mourning process that's not well understood. But some things are universal. Today, one mother's loss is another's gain. The final month of the dry season is taking its toll. With so little food and water, many are starving. This young bull's mother may have succumbed to the heat. It's more than he can bear. are desperate too. Under the most extreme conditions, these bitter enemies can't even summon the strength to pick a fight. As the buffalo descend, their exhaustion is obvious. Now, even early mornings bring little relief from the heat. Ah. 
Shaka can sense their vulnerability. She spots an opportunity. Calves are less protected than usual. Jaduma notices too. The tired buffalo linger. The leaders consider their opponents. Both sides seem to acknowledge it's been a long, hard season. cautiously moves away from the pride. But they have waited too long. Shaka finally gets her calf. charges, but misses the target, and the calf is left on its own. Though he's weak and emaciated, Chiduma makes his first kill. It's the pride's most calculated hunt yet, and a sign that Shaka's taught them well. Within days, Massive clouds gather, and the long-awaited rain returns. Gradually, the water replenishes the spring and begins to transform this parched land, restoring all who depend on it. Soon, the spring becomes a river, filling creeks and pools, ultimately feeding the mighty Zambezi itself. With abundant food and water, the buffalo can roam freely now, though the lions are never far behind. Their rivalry will continue on this newly fertile ground. Soon, Shaka's family will separate for good. Jaduma and Kwame will leave the pride to live as grown males do alone in the bush. Moya will have cubs of her own to protect and teach. She'll likely bring them back to this spring, as her mother did, once every year. Because when the dry season comes again, the same herds will return. It's what they've been doing for generations. The landscape may change, but the battles will remain, both within the species and between them. The ebb and flow, the triumphs and tragedies are simply the beat of life here.
in one of the world's last wild places.